Good day and welcome back to Iran Daily News Feed. An appeal court in Bahrain has confirmed the verdict in the Tehran money laundering case, which is the largest money laundering case in its history. The Bahraini Court of Appeals upheld the verdict in the case of the biggest money laundering in the history of Bahrain, which was issued against the Central Bank of Iran and several other Iranian banks. In late July, the higher criminal court issued its verdict in the largest money laundering case in the history of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Convicting Future Bank and six of its officials, the Central Bank of Iran and other Iranian banks finding them 19 million Bahraini dinars and confiscating laundering money amounting to approximately 1.3 billion USD while sentencing six convicted individuals to imprisonment. His Excellency Attorney General Dr. Ali bin Fadl al Buanain said the higher criminal court has convicted the Central Bank of Iran and several Iranian banks in the addition to Future Bank and six of its officials. Five of the convicted individuals were sentenced to 10 years imprisonment each and the sixth convicted individual was sentenced to five years imprisonment. Hackers believed to be linked to Tehran have breached an Israeli internet hosting company, taking down several of its sites. The hackers on Saturday night released some alleged personal information online, including from an LGBTQ dating site, according to Hebrew media reports. The hacker group Black Shadow has leaked data from various Israeli companies such as LGBTQ dating app Atraf, Down Bus Company and Tor Booking Company Pegasus on Saturday night. Earlier in the day, the leaked data from the Cabin Bus app after previous threats. They did not contact us, so first data is here, the group said on Telegram, affixing a photo of what appeared to be a database of Israel citizen personal information. If you do not contact us, it will be more, added the group. The Tehran Link Black Shadow hacking group, which in recent days has been leaking personal information from Israeli websites, had its Telegram messaging app channels removed on Sunday. In a Q&A session with members of the Swedish parliament, Swedish Foreign Minister Ann Lande expressed official concern about the human rights situation in Iran. In her tweet on Friday, the Swedish Foreign Minister announced the situation of human rights in Iran is very serious, saying she and Sweden's government have continuously brought up the issue in talks with the representatives of the Islamic Republic. She emphasized that it's not least to religious and ethnic. U.S. Treasury has impacted sanctions on networks and individuals in connection with Tehran's unmanned aerial vehicle program. On Friday, October 29, 2021, the U.S. Department of the Treasury's Office of Foreign Asset Control OFAC, designated members of the network companies and individuals that have provided critical support to the unmanned aerial vehicle UAV programs of the IRGC and its expeditionary unit, the IRGC Cuts Force. OFAC is also designated Saeed al Rajani, the commander of the IRGC Aerospace Force UAV Command. The IRGC Quds Force has used and proliferated lethal UAVs for use by Tehran supported groups, including Hezbollah, Hamas, Qatayb Hezbollah, and the Houthis, and to Ethiopia, where the escalating crisis threatens to destabilize the border region. Lethal UAVs have been used in attacks on international shipping and on U.S. forces. The U.S. says Tehran deploys attack drones in Ethiopia. In a statement, U.S. Treasury Department declared the Quds Force had used and deployed deadly drones by Tehran-backed groups including Hezbollah, Hamas, Qatayb Hezbollah, the Houthis, and even in Ethiopia where the escalating crisis threatens to destabilize the border region. Meanwhile, Israeli intel expert Dani Citronovich warned earlier that the Islamic Republic is expanding arms sale in Africa and providing Ethiopia with UAVs. Now the US officially accuses the Ayatollahs of doing it, interesting to see what comes next. A Houthi ballistic missile attack on a mosque and a religious school killed and injured at least 29 civilians, including women and children, in the Yemeni province of Marib, the country's information minister said in a statement on his Twitter on Monday. Two ballistic missiles were used in the attack late on Sunday, Marib governor's office said in a statement. 
There was no immediate claim of responsibility by the Tehran-backed Houthis. And that was all for today. I am Kate and thank you for the privilege of your time.